I want you to hit me as hard as you can. When it comes to major Hollywood movies based on true stories, the age-old question is always how faithful the big screen adaptation remains to the truth. Martin Scorsese's epic mob drama Casino, adapted from the book Casino Love and Honor in Las Vegas by Nicholas Pileggi, has many embellishments to make the story more cinematic, but perhaps more importantly, to protect the names of the real-life criminals involved. The story about powerful casino boss Sam Ace Rothstein, played by Robert De Niro, and the criminal exploits of his pal Nicky Santoro, played by Joe Pesci, does feature a number of factual events that occurred in Las Vegas during the 1970s and 80s. Not only are the main characters based on actual people, but most of the content portrayed in the movie is rooted in reality as well. Let's roll the dice and find out what the f really happened to this movie. As with Scorsese's acclaimed gangster movie, Goodfellas, major characters in Casino are based on real-life people. The story of Ace Rothstein is the true tale of Las Vegas casino boss Frank Lefty Rosenthal. In the film, Rothstein runs the fictitious Tangiers Casino in Las Vegas. In reality, Rosenthal ran four casinos during his time in Vegas, including the Stardust, Hacienda, Fremont, and Marina. For legal purposes, the Stardust was substituted for the imaginary Tangiers in the film. For the exteriors depicted in the movie, the real Riviera Casino was used as the Tangiers. Exterior shots were filmed at the Landmark Hotel, located across the street from the Hilton Las Vegas. Following the movie's production, the Landmark Hotel was demolished. As described in the film, Rosenthal truly was one of the best sports handicappers in Las Vegas. According to Sports Illustrated, Rosenthal was one of the greatest living experts on sports gambling. And according to USA Today, Rosenthal was responsible for adding sports betting to Las Vegas casinos. In 1976, Rosenthal created the first sports book in the Stardust, complete with six large TV sets. Joe Pesci's character of Nicky Santoro was based on made Chicago mobster Anthony the Ant Spilotro. Nicky's brother Dominic in the film was also based on Anthony's real brother Michael Spilotro. Joe Pesci included several factual mannerisms in his performance as Nicky Santoro, including a patch of gray in his hair and a nervous tick of gnawing on his thumb while under FBI surveillance. Reportedly, Pesci was so convincing as Spilotro that several casino pit bosses who knew the gangster in real life nearly fainted upon seeing him on the film set. The character of Ginger McKenna, played by Sharon Stone, was patterned after Rosenthal's real wife, Geraldine Jerry McGee Rosenthal, a former Vegas hustler and showgirl at the Tropicana. Geraldine's longtime lover Lenny Marmore was changed to Lester Diamond, a low-level pimp who was played by an oily James Woods in the film version. The movie's Frank Marino, portrayed by Frank Vincent, was modeled after Frank Culotta, a real gangster who turned state's evidence against Spilotro in the 1980s. Culotta himself makes an uncredited cameo appearance as a hitman with gray hair towards the end of the film. Philip Green, the frontman for the Tangiers Casino, played by Kevin Pollack in the film, was based on real casino owner Alan Glick. As depicted in the movie, Chicago Teamsters did fund the casino by funneling money through the Argent Corporation, solely owned by Glick. Afterwards, Rosenthal was given free reign to run the casino as he saw fit. You know, if I did it, I'd have to run it my way. One of the main conflicts in Casino shows how Ace skirts the law regarding a casino license, which made it difficult for him to operate his business as planned. In reality, Rosenthal did not possess a license required to legally operate a casino. As seen in the film, Ace circumvented the law by constantly changing his professional title so that his license application would be continually delayed. This happened for real, as Rosenthal knew his illegal mob ties would make it nearly impossible to legitimately obtain a license. A high-profile court case occurred as well, in which Rosenthal berated a gaming official in the confrontational manner shown in Casino. Ace's lawyer, Oscar Goodman, who plays himself in the film, was Rosenthal's legal defender in real life. Goodman represented several high-profile gangsters until he was elected mayor of Las Vegas in 1999. Later in the movie, when Ace presents his case before the Nevada Gaming Commission, legendary comedian Dick Smothers plays a Nevada state senator. The character is based on former state senator Harry Reid, who served as the gaming commissioner of Nevada at the time Rosenthal attempted to gain his casino license. The courtroom scene was lifted from a real hearing that took place in 1978, in which Rosenthal was denied a license as a result of his ties to organized crime. 
In addition, the scene in which the FBI agents land their surveillance plane on the fairway of the country club while Ace interviews for his gaming license also occurred in reality. However, rather than a lack of fuel, the plane landed due to sudden mechanical failure. Once the real Rosenthal found success running the Stardust without a license, it wasn't long before his criminal cohort, Anthony the Ant Spilotro, wanted a piece of the action. As shown in the film, Spilotro, aka Santoro, was so reckless that he was ultimately banned from every casino in Las Vegas by the Nevada Gaming Commission in 1979. The year prior, Spilotro's name was placed in the infamous Black Book, a list of people banned from entering casino premises and other licensed gaming parlors. What am I doing out here? I'm trying to make a living, that's all. As seen in the movie, Spilotro's Gold Rush jewelry store was raided by the FBI in 1978. However, the raid was deemed unlawful in court, and Oscar Goodman was able to get Spilotro off with a severe warning. In 1988, as a result of his connections with the Chicago and Kansas City Mafia, Rosenthal's name was also added to the Vegas Black Book next to Spilotro, and perhaps the most notorious gangster of all time, Al Capone. Several other events portrayed in the film occur just as they did in real life. For example, the scene in which two gamblers are caught electronically cheating at blackjack occurred in reality. The two men were part of a larger contingency that had been swindling casinos in Vegas for years. According to Rosenthal, the punishment shown in the film slightly differed from reality, but one of the men's hands was actually given a good hammering as a lesson. Ouch. One of the most iconic scenes in the film involves Tony Dogs, a rival Irishman being tortured following his involvement in shooting up a bar owned by Nicky. After two full days and nights of brutal beatings, Dogs has his head crushed in a vice until his eyeballs pop out of their sockets. Believe it or not, this actually happened, back in 1962. However, the actual torture came as retaliation for the murder of the Scalvo brothers in an incident that is unrelated to the plot of the movie. The real Tony Dogs, Billy McCarthy, was a low-level gangster who refused to give up names upon being physically battered by Spilotro and his crew. Spilotro really did stab McCarthy in the testicles with an ice pick before squeezing his head in a vice. Upon having his head crunched until one of his eyeballs popped out, McCarthy finally named Jimmy Maraglia, changed to Charlie, Charlie M. in the film, as the one responsible for the Scalvo hit. In Scorsese's version, Nicky puts him out of his misery by having one of his goons slash his throat after the confession. According to Pileggi's book, McCarthy was doused with gasoline and burned to death instead. As Nicky mentions in the film, Spilotro called McCarthy He was one of the toughest Irishmen I ever met. Not shown is the fact that Jimmy Maraglia was also murdered and dumped beside the real McCarthy's corpse in the trunk of a car. These were infamously known as the m, &M murders. Not very sweet. One true facet of Casino involves Nicky's taboo love affair with Ace's wife, Ginger. Indeed, the real Anthony Spilotro did have a sexual affair with Rosenthal's wife, Jerry, although the fatal ramifications of their relationship were exaggerated in the film version. According to the Chicago Tribune, in 2007, gangster Nicholas Calabrese testified in the Family Operation Secrets trial that Spilotro was targeted for a lethal hit following the discovery of his affair with Jerry Rosenthal. Also, as depicted in the film, Spilotro actually recruited men from back home, including his younger brother, to carry out a series of criminal activities after being banned from every casino in Vegas. Along with his brother, Michael Spilotro, a dozen other gangsters, including guys with colorful nicknames like Fat Herbie and Crazy Larry, had their real names changed in the film. The real-life Sam and Ginger, Frank and Jerry, did have children together. In Casino, they have one daughter named Amy. In reality, they had two children, a daughter named Samantha and a son named Stephen. Jerry also had a child named Robin with Lenny Marmer, aka Lester Diamond. The sequence involving Amy being kidnapped by Ginger and Lester also occurred in reality. According to FrankRosenthal.com, Jerry and Lenny took his money and abducted both of his children, similar to what we see in the movie. Following her divorce, as shown in the film, Jerry eventually died of a fatal overdose at 46 years old, discovered in a Los Angeles hotel room in November of 1982. The film features a real-life mafia hit that takes place in Costa Rica. When the Chicago mob learns of a low-level accountant's thievery, they send some goons to whack him in Central America. This truly happened to an accountant named John Nance, who also served as a bagman who would pick up and deliver cases of cash in Vegas and distribute them around the country on behalf of the Mafia. When Nance's son was arrested for drug possession, the Chicago mob feared their bagman would turn state's evidence. To ensure he never did, Nance was murdered in Costa Rica, where he was hiding in 1983. Nance is one of the only characters whose name was not changed for the film. 
Also taken from real life is the TV show hosted by Ace, the fictional version called Ace is High. In reality, Rosenthal hosted the less imaginatively named The Frank Rosenthal Show, which was filmed at the Stardust Casino. Several high-profile celebrities appeared on the show, including Frank Sinatra, Bob Hope, Wayne Newton, and more. Don Rickles, who plays Tangier's manager Billy Sherbert in the film, also appeared on The Frank Rosenthal Show, alongside Sinatra in his episode. While Rosenthal was ultimately pleased with Scorsese's final film, one detail he took issue with was the fictional depiction of him juggling on the show. Rosenthal not only claimed he never juggled on the show, but also said he thought that part of the film made him look foolish. Oh, Jesus. Then again, Rosenthal also wanted 80-year-old Richard Widmark to play him in the film, so his judgment may not have been the best. Another truism concerns the near-fatal car explosion that bookends the film. According to the New York Times, such an assassination attempt truly did happen to Rosenthal on October 4, 1982, outside of Tony Roma restaurant. When Rosenthal entered his Cadillac and turned on the ignition, the car immediately went up in flames. Rosenthal miraculously escaped with only minor burns and injuries. Or perhaps no miracle at all. The reason Rosenthal survived was attributed to a special metal plate under the driver's seat of his 1981 Cadillac Eldorado. Due to a balancing issue on previous models of the vehicle, GM added the plate beneath the driver's seat to rectify the issue. It's ultimately what saved Rosenthal's life. After a lengthy organized crime career filled with violence and danger, the real Frank Rosenthal died of a heart attack in his Miami Beach home on October 13, 2008, at 79 years of age. One significant alteration in the film version of Casino involves the grisly demise of Nicky and Dominic Santoro, whose fate was sealed by Chicago mob bosses. In the film, the two men are driven into a cornfield in Indiana and beaten almost to death with baseball bats before being buried alive. While it's true the real-life Anthony and Michael Spilotro's bodies were dumped in a cornfield post-mortem, their cause of death was drastically different than the way it's portrayed in the film. According to journalist Jeff Cohen's 2009 book, Family Secrets, The Case That Crippled the Chicago Mob, the Spilotro brothers were actually murdered in an Illinois basement in June of 1986. Although testimony could not identify the specific house, the Spilotros were beckoned to a residence near O'Hare Airport. Although the brothers were apprehensive, they also believed they might be promoted to a higher position within the Chicago mob, and so they chose to make the visit. Upon arrival, Anthony and Michael were taken into the basement, where a gang of goons attacked them on the spot. Although Michael had smuggled in a pocket-sized 22 caliber handgun, he was unable to access the firearm. Anthony was heard asking to say a prayer, which was brutally declined. Rather than blunt objects, the pathology reports indicated that the fatal injuries were inflicted by feet and fists. After their murders, the Spilotro brothers were stripped to their underwear and stacked atop each other in a five-foot grave in a cornfield located roughly 100 miles from the murder scene in Enos, Indiana. When a farmer stumbled on the gruesome grave, he first thought someone had buried a deer. Anthony and Michael's brother, Patrick, a dentist, had to identify their remains through x-ray dental records. A substantially less bloody fabrication in the film includes the sequence where irate Kansas City mobster Artie Piscano discusses the Vegas skim while the FBI listens via wiretap through a vent shaft. The scene includes comic relief involving Artie's mother, played by Scorsese's own mother Catherine, which differs from what actually happened. Rather than an Italian grocery store, the feds learned of the Vegas skim by eavesdropping on a conversation held in a Kansas City pizzeria by the Savelli crime family. There was no elderly woman present to berate her son for profanity, only ruthless mobsters out for blood. Another bit of the movie's fiction involves the death of Artie Piscano, who was based on real-life gangster Carl Tuffy De Luna. But instead of suddenly dropping dead from a heart attack as the feds raid his home, like the film depicts, the real De Luna was arrested when his home was raided on Valentine's Day in 1979. De Luna served a 20-year sentence until he was released in 1998. So there you have it. As you can see, Scorsese made Casino as authentic as humanly possible without implicating or alienating the real-life people involved. A few alterations were made for dramatic effect, but by and large, Casino is a faithful rendition of Nicholas Pileggi's non-fiction book, Casino, Love and Honor in Las Vegas. From minute details and specific character mannerisms to historical events and infamous legal consequences, it turns out that Casino is more fact than fiction.